from the beginning of creation, millions and millions of years ago, to this very moment, and into all eternity, the message is constant and consistent. God is love. And you and I are the recipients of that infinite love of God. And that's the message that we hear and that our God speaks in abundance. But why? Why are we so slow to really believe that? If you and I believe in the depths of our being what God says, and he is truth itself, he is forever faithful. If we believe that amazing reality that he loves each one of us with an everlasting, an unconditional love, not like your love and my love, but a total unconditional love, if we really believe that, then we're filled with gratitude. And no matter what life touches us with, we know that because of the love of God, we are in the process of being saved and healed and redeemed for eternal life. We hear it so easily. But yet everything about God is eternal, total, unconditional, abundant. That is the amazing reality of those three simple words, God is love. See how different his love is from ours. He loves us even before we love him. The gospel of life, the gospel of joy. The entire message of Jesus is love. But absolutely nothing like the love that this world propounds. It is a self-sacrificing, self-giving love. Never a self-serving love. So how do we do that? How do we live such a lofty reality? And it is a reality. We do it with Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And each one of us knows that. And don't we do wonderful things for each other? Don't we sacrifice and give without counting the cost? Because God is love and we are called to love. We're creatures of habits, and so often things roll off of us. Sometimes we take things for granted. But what did Jesus just say to each one of us? As the Father loves me, I love you. May that sink into us. As God the Father loves his Son with an infinite love, so he and Jesus and the Holy Spirit loves each one of us. That fills us with joy. That fills us with gratitude. You know, joy is not the absence of suffering or difficulties. They're a part of life. But Jesus showed us what suffering and death is all about. Death isn't the end. Because of God's love, it is the beginning of eternal life. The Holy Spirit is called the joy-giving spirit. He gives us security. He gives us confidence that God has chosen each one of us, and we are his forever. And he is absolutely faithful. The Eucharist. Doesn't that fill us with gratitude and with joy? That's how much Jesus loves us. It's no longer a piece of bread. He is really present in the Eucharist. 
And he gives himself to each one of us. That's one of the gifts of love, to be present to those that we love. And he suffered, and he died, and he rose to give us the gift of the Eucharist. That's God who is love. Dorothy Day is a convert. Her causes are for canonization, and she celebrated Eucharist every day of her life. And she suffered greatly, even from some of her own people. And she said, I can put up with anything between one Eucharist and the next. She knew that God was love. She knew that Jesus was faithful and that he was always with her, even when she didn't feel it, which was most of the time. Even when she questioned and said, Lord, where are you? In the quietness of her heart, he said, be at peace. I am your God. I am faithful, and I'm always with you. Jesus just said, you didn't choose me. I chose you, and I commissioned you to go forth and to bear fruit that will last. And the fruit that we bear is putting our own flesh and blood on the gospel of life on the gospel of joy. Someone once said, you might be the only gospel, the only good news that some people will hear today. That's the confidence that God has in you and in me. That's his love. And he will never, he will never, ever stop loving us. There's nothing that we can do. Even if we turn from the Lord, he will never stop loving us. That's how faithful his love is. St. Therese, the little flower, she died when she was 24 years old. And she said, in the end, it won't matter whether I know that I love and that I serve God. But what will matter is that I know that I know that he loves me no matter what. She knew that God is love. And that's the reality of his love. He loves us no matter what. Be filled with gratitude. Be filled with joy. And go out of this church and share that gospel of life with each and every person that Jesus puts into our life today and every day. He's with us in the good times and in the difficult times, in the extraordinary and the ordinary moments of life. One of my closest friends for the last 44 years is a man living with and dying from ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. He's a convert. He has an absolutely powerful faith that empowers him every day to live life fully and gratefully. As you know, with ALS, your mind is absolutely clear, but your body is, di your body is dying all around you. And yet he carries that cross. And a man said to him, for what? What difference does it make? Where's God when you need him? And Tom said to that man, Jesus is with me every step of the way. And with him, I can do this. That's love. That's faith. That's believing the reality that God is love and that we are his forever. Let us love with the love of Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us live life fully and gratefully so that one day we shall live forever in heaven with our God. That's our God today and forever. The God of love. The God of eternal life. 
the God of unending joy, the God of abundance. How absolutely blessed we are by our loving and generous God.